Yes, sure. Um, the, you know, what is unique about multiple myeloma compared to other malignancies is that the definition of the disease is like clinical pathologic. By that I mean that rather than a pathologist telling you that a patient's biopsy shows myeloma, on top of it, you also need to demonstrate that the patient has actually suffered some harm from that. And that means either bone disease, bone destruction, kidney failure, anemia, high calcium levels. So what happens is that we are unable to diagnose myeloma at an early stage and initiate therapy if we are waiting for end organ damage to happen. That was fine when we had very limited options for therapy, but it's not fine when we have such great treatments which have more than doubled the survival of multiple myeloma patients. And further, early therapy is critical if we are going to ever cure this disease. So the International Myeloma Working Group, which consists of over 180 researchers, decided it is time to revise the definition of multiple myeloma so that diagnosis can be made early in a timely manner. In order to do that, though, we had to first identify biomarkers that accurately predicts who has malignancy and who doesn't prior to the development of end organ damage. And that work took about three years to do. Uh, a lot of primary papers had to be published. And the result of all of that work is the new criteria. There are three biomarkers that we have identified that we predict risk of progression to such high degree that we can use that to diagnose myeloma. Uh, those include the level of plasma cells in the bone marrow, uh, the, the free light chain ratio, and MRI showing focal bone marrow signal changes. In addition to that, the criteria also allow us now to use more modern imaging me methods, including MRI scans and PET CT scans, to diagnose bone disease at an early stage. Prior to that, we were primarily relying on skeletal x-rays, uh, which oftentimes may be quite late in showing the bone damage. I think there's great potential now because for one thing we are hoping that survival is prolonged. More importantly, quality of life is also improved because now we don't need to tell patients that you know you probably have myeloma but we're going to wait till you get kidney failure or bone destruction before we start therapy. Rather we can use uh, these other biomarkers and imaging tools to initiate therapy before the damage happens. That will improve quality of life. We do think, though, that early incorporation of therapy targeting the plasma cell clone will lead to prolonged survival. There's already some randomized data that patients with smoldering myeloma, high-risk myeloma, treated with uh, drugs like lenalidomide or, and dexamethasone actually live longer in one of the randomized trials. That needs to be confirmed, but there's hope that this will actually translate not just into improvement in quality of life, but also into overall survival and potentially pave the way for a cure. You know, one of the main advantages of this, uh, uh, this International Myeloma Working Group criteria is that this is a collective effort. Over 180 researchers represent the IMWG, and there are 34 authors on this manuscript from various countries and from various institutions. Some of them are the world's experts in multiple myeloma. And therefore, I am very confident that this will be incorporated into clinical practice as well as clinical trials. Our patients are wanting uh, this to happen, and that will also provide the impetus to move forward. This is, a, this is not an original research paper. This is the, this is the summary, uh, summation of uh, various research projects that had to be done to change the criteria. Um, I am sure that uh, many people speaking at national meetings will highlight the changes in the, in the diagnostic criteria that have occurred because it does change. You know, for, It's a paradigm shift in myeloma. We are now willing to treat myeloma before symptoms happen. And that's a very big thing because we haven't done that for decades. We've not treated myeloma like that. And, um, and so this is a big deal. And the, and the fact that philosophically we are willing to do that will enable new criteria to come up, other biomarkers that can also do the same thing and help us identify more patients at risk. Uh, so I think it's very positive and people will be talking about it, I think, uh, in many national meetings.